This tutorial will walk through installing and using the Harness command line interface. You can also find these steps on Harness Developer Hub, which we've linked in the description. We'll start with installing and configuring the CLI, and then move into a sample GitOps deployment. I'll be on a Linux box with x86 architecture, but you'll choose the command that represents your system. So we'll start by pulling down and unpacking the CLI package. It's a fairly lightweight Go binary. Then we'll add it to our path variable for easy execution. And after we've done that, Harness V gives us an easy check that it's working and at the version we want. All right, so we got the command line package installed, but there's a couple other things we need to set up. We'll need to authenticate to Harness, and to do that, we'll need an access token. Go to API keys in your profile settings in the UI and create a new key. Once the key's created, you'll also create a token to accompany the key. The token is what we'll give our command line client to authenticate to Harness. Back at our terminal, we'll do our initial authentication with Harness Login, passing in our access token and also account ID. The account ID you can get from your web browser URL when you're accessing the Harness website. And we are in. Okay, so for the next step, we're going to copy down a GitHub repo that contains some useful resources for us. It includes an application for us to deploy called Guestbook, as well as configurations for Harness entities we'll create that help us deploy the application. We recommend forking it to your own GitHub namespace, which I've already done, so you can modify it as you like. So back in my local terminal, I'll clone down the repo, and again, it's going to be my forked version I'm pulling down. Looking inside the clone directory, we'll see the source code for the app we'll be deploying and also harness entity configurations. So we have this source repo I've pulled down. I also have a local Kubernetes cluster that I'll be deploying to. That means the next big step is having my local infrastructure be able to talk to harness. We'll install an agent in our cluster that coordinates the resources we define and deploy. For this GitOps agent, we'll be in the harness UI. We'll use the command line though to create everything else. Notice right now, nothing's created in Harness. We'll use the CLI in a bit to set up the repository and cluster configs and application deployment in Harness. But first we'll set up the agent. It's worth noting that if you're UI averse, we do have a Terraform provider for the agent and you're welcome to use that. In this example, we'll stick with the UI. Now I'm on a clean slate, so I don't have an existing Argo CD, though you're welcome to bring along your own. All I need to do then is give the agent a name and the name of the namespace I'm deploying to in the cluster, which I'll just stick with default. And finally, we're presented with an installer. Harness gives you the option of Helm or a YAML manifest. It'll be your choice. I'll go with YAML here. After downloading the YAML, I'll just apply it here from my terminal. And now we have an agent to communicate between our deploy environment and Harness. We can also confirm back in the Harness UI that the agent is connected and it's healthy. Next is where we'll take advantage of Harness CLI commands. Our repository has a directory called Harness GitOps with three Harness entity configurations, our cluster and repository mappings, and our application deployment. Now you can make these in Harness the clicky way using the UI, but the goal for us here is use local Harness commands instead. So first, we'll make the repository entity. That's going to be a reference in Harness to our forked repo that has the guestbook app. We'll specify that forked repo in this repository.yaml config. After saving our changes, we'll also create an environment variable that just references the name of our GitOps agent. We'll need to reference that agent ID when running our Harness commands. So let's make our repo entity. The command is harness gitops repository, and for readability, I'm going to put the arguments on their own lines. We'll pass in the repository.yaml file we edited as our spec. The next argument, apply, is to create the resource. Think of the similar argument in kubectl and Terraform. And then we'll reference our gitops agent ID, which remember we saved as an environment variable. And ta-da! The output shows the repository didn't already exist, so Harness made it. Let's check our work. Back in the UI, we can verify our repository shows up and Harness can properly connect to it. So one entity down, two to go. Next is our cluster mapping. 
Now again, you can make this in the UI if you want, but we'll go back and script it out on the command line. The command is harness gitops cluster. You might be noticing a theme here. And we'll pass in the cluster spec from our harness gitops directory. We have the same apply argument for resource creation. And then we'll specify the gitops agent here as well. Like before, harness checks if the entity exists. It doesn't, so it makes the cluster mapping. Checking back in the UI, we see our cluster is now there. Don't worry about the warning. It just means Harness is wondering where our application deployment is, and we haven't done that part yet. And by yet, I mean we're going to do it now. We'll go back to that Harness GitOps directory and open the spec for application.yaml. This is the guestbook app we're deploying. Like the repository spec, we'll want to reference our forked code base. So we will make that change here. and save. We hopefully know the drill by now. The command we'll use is harness gitops application. We will pass in our edited application spec. We'll add an apply argument like before, and then reference our gitops agent and execute. As per usual, harness checks if the deployment already exists. It doesn't, so it makes it. We can check our work once again by going to the Harness UI. We see the application entity is created, and then we can test a deployment by syncing with our current repository state. The resource view shows all the cluster resources that are created, and we can cross-reference that with local kubectl commands. And for the cherry on top, we'll do a port forward and see our guestbook app. And there it is. So the goal of this tutorial was to get you comfortable and confident installing and using the Harness CLI. We have some additional resources in the description. Thanks for watching. Now go out there and get ship done.